Good evening. Hello, Adriana. Hello. Hello, Julio. Okay. So we're just waiting for the others. Okay, there, there, there they are. They're coming. Showing up. Hello. Hello, Julio. Good evening. Congratulations, teacher. Oh, thank you, Sergio. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How I'm was the day? Tired, but, but fine. Okay. Uh, you started working. It was a hard day. Sorry? You started working, huh? Well, you've been working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, I am working in a, as usual, really, uh, because uh, about ninety-five percent of my job I can do a uh, home office. Uh, okay. I, I, so uh, it's it's more my job is consulting. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I can do that from my house. Uh, so I, I have I have been working uh, normally. But, okay. but 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 you being uh, but, it, but I think I work and doing some uh, home office all it's also tiring, right? Yeah, it's it's more tired because you don't have a the, the normal distraction of the of your partners. So <laughs> your, your really your partners uh, go to your desk and and start talking about. Uh, some movies, some sports, or, or, or whatever, you know, and in uh, that distraction, uh -huh. do that distraction in the house. Yes, that helps you, right? Because you have all the topics and things. To, then mm -hmm. your your yeah. mind rests for a little yes. bit. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That it, I, I think it's, it's very good uh, to to have uh, that that uh, partnership with your co-workers. Yes, and now it's, health, it's, it's healthy. Yeah, yeah, it's healthy, mm -hmm. and, and 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 helps to to work better together too. Uh -huh, exactly. Yes. Okay. Good. Well, but the good thing is that we're here, right? Ready to. Yeah. To to beat these topics. Okay. Hi, Eric. Ready to explain the passive voice, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How was your day? Saying? Oh, great. Nice. No, relax. Great. Okay, okay. I, I cannot yeah. complain. <laughs> me yeah. too, me too. It was a really... Uh, First full day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very... How do you say, tranquilo? Uh, quiet. Um, quiet. It was yeah. a quiet day today. Yep. An easy day. Yep. <laughs> okay, good. All right, good. Well, let's get started because we have a... A lot of material to see, right? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> just a just a quick review of the passive voice. We have uh, then we say that we use it to when the agent is unknown, unimportant, or obvious from the context that we said the other day, right? America was discovered in 1492, so it's not really important to mention who discovered it. Okay, and when we don't know, for example, the, uh, let's say the, um, something that we don't know who discovered, then it says this, this uh, paragraph or this, this quote was created uh, many years ago, but probably it says anonymous, right? So we don't know who did it. And then uh, we have to make more polite or formal statements, usually formal, right, for police reports uh, or office reports. Then it's very common to use this uh, kind of passive voice. When the action is more important than the agent, okay, that we want to emphasize, that's why we invert the subject and object, right, because we want to emphasize uh, and, and uh, let's say the object instead of the subject. And to put emphasis on the agent, like this. Okay, here, remember you have the, 
the past tense. This is what we saw last uh, a week, right? He says, for example, my father planted this tree last year. The tree was planted. This is the present. I am, we are, I was, I were. Here you have some examples with the simple present. M probably here we have the simple present tense and this one. Okay. Uh, Adriana, can you please read this example here? The app the active form. Okay. He is writing a novel at the moment. Okay, this is you can see, for example, uh, Julio is writing a novel at the moment, okay? Or we can say, for example, Sergio is writing a novel at the moment. That's what they are doing in this moment. Okay, but what we want to emphasize here is a novel is being written by Julio at the moment, okay? So in this moment. So here, if you see, the structure is writing then we change the writing for being okay the ing form and then always we use what form of the verb the past participle okay and then we say novel a novel is being written by him at the moment what is the Let's say, can you tell me another sentence where we can use this one? Present continue. Who can tell any, me? Any, any sentence. Any sentence and present continue. Mm, okay. One sentence in present continuous. Uh, I I I'm going to use one of my uh, previously sentences. Okay. Okay. BM, BM, uh, a new a new car is being but developed. No, but in, but in, uh, in active form. In the active form. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, BMW, BMW is a developing uh, new car. Okay, you say B and W is developing, right? Exactly. He's developing a new car in this moment. Okay. And then you say B and W is the subject. He's developing a new car. Okay, so then when we change that into the passive voice, we say a new car. It's being developed it's being by developed. BMW. Developed, sorry, sorry. Developed by, by BMW. By BMW. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to mute your, uh, your microphone, please. Okay. All right. So then we have. And this is. Hello, hello. Who, who, who is. <laughs> Don't forget to to keep your <laughs> microphones mute. Okay. Then we have the passive, and then this is, for example, always the way that we're going to be changing. He is writing a novel at the moment. A novel is being written. A BMW is developing a car. Okay, developing a car. And then a car is being developed by B and W. So the idea is that you always, I mean, any sentence that you have in the active, when you change, you're going to use the object at the beginning. Okay, and then you say a novel. And then the verb to be, next. Okay, okay. and the verb to be in ing form, this is expressing that you are using the act uh, passive form in the present continuous. How do you know that this is passive form and present continuous? Because you see this. 
being. Okay. Uh -huh. Is being Present written. continuous of, of, uh -huh. of being. Yes. What is another, for example, if we substitute written, you can use is being sold. Okay. Yeah. Is being printed. Okay. Verbs that will probably uh, fit in this sentence a novel is being written by him, a novel is being uh, printed by him, a novel is being sold by him, a, another, uh, a novel is being published, okay, uh, at the moment, or by him. Uh, what is another there? Written, printed, sold, published. Play it. Uh, what? Play it. Play. A play. Play. Do you know if it is played. Like played in a drama, right? A novel is being Sorry. played. Okay, probably yes. If it is in a in a theater, right? Because you can do that. Okay, but you see the idea is always the same, right? Always. If it is plural, okay, some some novels or some books are being written by him. Okay, okay. You always have to use being, right? Yes, that's, that's the idea, yeah. right? Being, okay. being. Okay. Yes, that's what it says. Am, um, is, or are, being. For example, I am. Uh, for example, uh, suppose you say, my, my boss is observing me. I am being, you say, I am, I am being observed by my boss, okay? Okay. You can use always am, is, or using being. This is present continuous. Remember we have the simple present, present continuous, and here we have the present perfect. The present perfect is just the same idea that you use, for example, what are the auxiliary verbs that we use for the present perfect? Has and have. Okay, has and have. Has just when we are talking about third person. Yes, he, she, it. Okay. Have when we are talking about I, we, you, they. And then we say we use been plus the past participle. This is, you yeah. know, this is like a math formula. Like when you're practicing mathematics, math. I say he just finished a novel. Present perfect. A novel has just been. Okay, there you go, been. Because it's novel, third person, finished. Okay. A hospital, uh, well, the first part of the hospital, El Salvador has just been finished. Yes? The first yes. part, the first part of the El Salvador hospital has just been finished. So this is an example that you can see in the real life. Okay? Good. A, an email, an email has just been sent. A, for example, an email has been sent to some of you, have you received, for example, have you received an email from English Corporativo? Yes. Some, everybody? Yes. Yes. Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay. So then an email, yes. we can say an email, an email has been sent mm. from English Corporativo to this group. Okay. So then this is one way that you can use the present uh, passive form, right? For example, they, in the, in the active form, we will say, they sent, okay? They have sent an email to this group, the students, or to the students. Teacher, in mm -hmm. is, sorry, in that uh, specific example, a novel has just been, been, Finish. It just is is because we are talking about uh, novel, right? Recent. No, it's recent. 
Okay. Yes, it's because it's recent. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what okay, I okay. told you, and that's what I gave you the other two examples. The other two, okay. the hospital exactly. is something recent. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, and also the, uh, the example about the email, right? Just means okay. that probably today or yesterday. This is a, long ago. Just, okay, okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Okay, thanks. All right, but what I want you to see is that the structure is always the same, right? Has just been, and always, always there is a form. Look at this one. The first one, E, M, is R in present, simple present. In present continuum, M is R being. In present perfect, has, have, been. Okay, there is always a form of the verb to be. And the past part is of the verb. Okay, then you have the simple past, the one we saw last week. And then we have the was where the past continues, similar to what I was telling you, but now in past. So instead of am, um, is, are, we use was and where. He was writing a letter at 8 p.m. yesterday. A letter was being written. And if you see always the was being to express to express the continuous tense. Questions in this in this case, in this moment. Say it now, no problem, don't worry. Make sure it's clear. Teacher. Yes. How about is the sentence? Is the sentence is in negative form? In what part of the sentence I I had to use not if after was or after being? Master was. Mm -hmm. For example, he was not uh, he was not writing a letter at a yesterday. And what about if a question? Mm -hmm. If question. a question, yes. Was a letter? No, in a question, it's no. I mean, can you, it's not very common that you use negative questions, but you can also use it. Wasn't. Wasn't, uh -huh. a, letter, wasn't a letter being written yesterday? Okay. Uh -huh. Wasn't a letter being written at 8 p.m. yesterday? For example, okay. wasn't, wasn't a new hospital being, a, a, let's say, being uh, opened uh, last night? Yes, you can use in the in the question. You can also use wasn't, or in the sentence you can say he was. It's always okay. after was. Have the negative goes in the in the auxiliary verb here. Okay. Just, just put the, the, the was were to the beginning of the sentence, right? Mm -hmm. In a question. Yep. yep. Yeah. In a question, yes. You only invert. And then you have, for example, this one: Was a letter being written? by him? Was an email being sent by him? Okay, was a, was a book being read by him? Okay, so you can use that one. Okay, then, uh, then we have the past perfect. I will share with you, and then you have the future. I have, I have uh, selected here only, if you see, in some kind of this is the simple present from here, on the number five. Simple present, present continuous, present perfect. Then I have the simple past, the past perfect, I mean, sorry, the past continuous and the past perfect, okay? Do you remember the past perfect? Yes. Yes, okay. Then we have the simple future, will, using will, right? This is using will, but you can also, it uh, depends on the, this, you can be the, he will finish the homework, he's going to finish the homework. So the homework will be finished, the homework is going to be finished. If it is a plan or a prediction. And then you have the, Future continues, 
I will be cooking lunch at 10 tomorrow. Lunch will be being cooked by Tom at 10 tomorrow. These structures probably sound, will, might, might sound weird because, you know, we don't, we don't use them at all in Spanish, right? So then that's probably, you know, you will find this a little bit more uh, complicated sometimes or, or weird how you want to, if you want to, to translate it into Spanish. And then you have the future perfect tense, right? By the end of the next week, 10 letters will have been written to her. Okay, for example, by the end of next week, uh, we will have, uh, let's say we will have, uh, probably we will have infected, no, that, that because I will change the meaning. By the end of this uh, next week, we will have more infected people than today, probably, right? So by the end of next week, okay, more infected people Okay, uh, there will be, let me see, we'll have, there will have be, there will have been probably, no, we have to change, no, I have, this is a different idea if I want to. I will have to write another sentence to that, for that. But the idea is that if we don't, uh, uh, if we continue going out by next, by the end of next week, we will have been infected by other people and we will have more uh, death. Okay, in that case, it's a little bit different from this one, but, but you can use it in that case. This is when we can use the future perfect tense. If we don't have another quarantine soon, okay, we will have, a, we will have, a, let's say, in probably, a, what? We, uh, we will have been into our houses. Yeah, but it's not a person. Again? Person. Yes. No, oh, okay, to, okay. I mean, you have to think about it. It's not something that will come, come up just like that. Okay. Okay, but let me think about one. But this one, have you, the, have you studied before the future perfect in other courses previously? Because if you haven't, then it's going to be... Who remember the future perfect tense? The future perfect is, is, is something that you, I think you, you tell us the last week that it, well, it, it, it's talking about something uh, not as specific, but it's probably you are going to do in the future. Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. You say, for example, imagine this one, by the end of next week, Use this same structure here. By the end of next week, uh, probably it's we will, we will. one. Let me see one, two, three. Probably because if you see the reports that we have, you know, of people who are infected, is almost more than one hundred every day. Every day. So in the last eight days, uh, the they have increased the numbers of infected people uh, almost one thousand. Okay, almost one thousand. So then by the end of next week, probably one, uh, one uh, probably 2,000 people will have been infected by the COVID-19. Okay, so this is something that we can predict that is going to happen, you know, uh, in one week if people uh, don't follow the, the measures, okay, to to take care of themselves, the protocols, okay? So this is one way to use it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I'm going, well, I will send you this, this, uh, this uh, presentation and I will give you my, my email, right? Okay, here.
Okay, there you go. So that's my, my, my email. There is in the chat. And please write two sentences. Well, I mean, two sentences because you, I, actually it's going to be only one. You are going to write one sentence in present, active and passive, okay? Then one sentence in present progressive, active and passive. One sentence in present perfect, active and, and passive. Okay, so that means for the nine different verb tenses. Okay, questions? How many sentences are we going to write down? About nine inactive, nine active sentences, and then change those nine sentences into passive form. Okay. Okay. So that would be with the same sentence that you write in active form, you pass it to the passive form. Okay. okay. Like, for example, you can write uh, here. Let's say he had finished his homework before eight yesterday. This is a past perfect, right? His homework had been finished, but uh, before eight yesterday. Remember that by is in parentheses because it can be omitted or you can use it. Okay? So this is, for okay. example, one example. So you write one example for the... One example for the present. Okay, one example for the present continuous, one for the present perfect, one for the simple of past, one for the past uh, progressive, and one for this one, okay? For the past perfect, one for the future, a future progressive, and then the future perfect. Okay? Okay. All right, so then uh, there you have my email, then you send it to the email. And if you want extra practice, you can write as many as you want, no problem. I'll check them and I send them back to you with the observations, okay? Okay. That's, uh, okay, did you? Okay. So we can practice, okay? And, and one thing, okay, these are only nine tenses. There are more. About the passive voice, remember that all the tenses that we use can be used in uh, in passive form, okay? But I guess that if you master, if you master these nine tenses, then the other forms will be easier to get, okay? So then, uh, but, but it requires a lot of practice, but if we take a lot of practice here, then it will take us more time, okay? I, will, I wish I could do it here in the class, but one hour is, is not enough, right? So then, uh, but at, at least, you know, but if you send the email, if you practice, if you write in, uh, I think that in one an extra hour or half half an hour, the two depends. So now you can do that that exercise. Okay. For tomorrow, right? Teacher? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you can do it for tomorrow, better, right? Uh, but uh, okay. but it depends. If you're much too busy, then probably not. Take your time. Okay. 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 But there yeah. is not a there is not limit time. No, 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 there's not, okay? Okay. There is no limit time and there is no limit in the number of sentences that you want to write, okay? The more you practice for me, better, okay? So then this is, okay. is an extra chance that you have to, to practice. And don't worry if you make mistakes, right? Because that's what I'm asking you to send it to my email so that I can see and then I can rewrite if it is necessary uh, uh, an observation or something and I send it back to you. Okay. Okay. Teacher, okay. Thank you. Yes. Just an, an observation. You have mm -hmm. a really easy Gmail, easy easy account. LuisAvelan@gmail.com. Oh yes. <laughs> that is excellent. Yeah. I, I Without know. any number. I cannot. I cannot forget that one. You know. It's, <laughs> that's why. That's why I like that one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, now we have the. Let me show you here. No, this is...
Okay, what, what else do we have? What was the other topic that we had pending? Model auxiliaries, right? Yes. Yes. What were the model auxiliaries that we saw last week? Who, may, my, my, might, most. Uh -huh. We had a may, could, yes, may, might, could, must, we didn't, but I guess that is going to be in the next one, okay. Here, let me see, just. Now this is obligation. I remember that the, the, the model auxiliaries are used to express different reactions also and feelings. For example, in this case, we are using to express permission, obligation, and prohibition. What are the ones that we use for permission? May? May. And can. Good. Can. can, right? I can. But uh, the, the, probably the part that we need to be aware of in this uh, topic is that some of these uh, model auxiliaries have different a different meaning depending on the context, right? For example, when we said about permission, you say can, right? Uh, can, I. can you say, can I use your phone? Can I use your uh, book? Can I you take turn it? off your... Uh -huh. That is, can I, okay? This is asking for permission. But also, can, as a, as a model auxiliary, you can use use it to express abilities, okay? And, and it's easy to see in the context, right? When you say, for example, I can drive a car. In that case, you are expressing an ability. I can, uh, let's say, uh, play chess, okay? Expressing an ability. I can, expect, uh, I can speak English, I can speak Spanish, right? Or in the past tense, I could speak English when I was four. I could speak English when I was 10. I could speak English when I was 11. So then it can be, depending on the context, that's the, the, the interpretation that we have to give. Obligation, must, what else? Another well, one that you, what? Uh -huh. An order. Uh -huh, like for example, something that is an, uh, something that it is a must, right? For example, we must study, we must stay home. Okay. That it's a need. Uh -huh. Need, for example, because there is an even need can be sometimes. Okay, and there is a need, right? There is a need of something. Okay, for example, you must water, you must water the the plants. Okay, because, they, the dog. because they need they need water to live. Mm -hmm. We must, uh, we must eat, okay, because we need to eat to survive, to live, okay, that is a need, exactly, an obligation, have to, it's another word that you can use, right, well, you have to, you have to study, you have to pay attention, you have to, uh, we have to work, okay, we have to pay our bills, right, so these are obligations, okay, and there are some others that are like prohibitions, right, also, depending on the context, you say, you must not, okay? You must not, uh, uh, what, are, what is a prohibition that you have in this class or in this program? Well, in this class, you don't have prohibitions, right? Just warnings. Speak, speaking in, in Spanish? <laughs> okay, only the teacher can speak Spanish. And then, <laughs> okay, so I have the authority. To, <laughs> okay, so the teacher can speak Spanish. But, but students, okay, they can can't. It's, they that's can. a provision. You can't. You can't speak Spanish, okay? You must not speak Spanish in this class. Okay? So, yes, that's a provision, right? What else? What could be another one? We have to be with the microphone mute. 
Uh -huh. We must keep, okay, we must keep our microphones mute. Yeah. We are not participating, okay? So that is, okay, so these are things, you know, like rules, right? Okay, perfect. Now let's see. Some other ideas from the video. Hi, let me ask you a question. Are you allowed to drink and drive? This time we'll talk about permission, prohibition, and obligation. So stay around for the explanation. Permission, obligation, and prohibition. Permission. You can camp here. You're allowed to take off your shoes. Obligation. You have to camp here. You've got to take off your shoes. Prohibition. You can't camp here. You aren't allowed to take off your shoes. When we talk about permission, we will use can or be allowed to. For example, you can park here. He's allowed to stay up late. We will use can't and not be allowed to for prohibition. He can't smoke in the lobby. They are not allowed to answer the phone. If you notice, it's the opposite of our permission usage. Finally, we have obligation. For obligation, have to or have got to are used. You have to pay rent. He's got to pick up the trash. Write one example for permission, obligation, and prohibition with real information about you. Okay, and this is what you were basically doing, right? What can you do so for permission? Now you can, you can ask questions anytime you want. Okay, what else? What is something? Participate in class. You can participate in class, yes, as many times as you wish. Mm -hmm. If what you else? don't believe that, asking Eric. <laughs> yes, if you don't believe Ask him, uh, you can ask, you can ask Eric. <laughs> okay, if you don't believe me, you can ask Eric. What else? You can make mistakes. You can make mistakes, okay? This is a very nice one because, you know, sometimes, you know, we, uh, we can do it from our point of view that we can say, we are allowed to make mistakes, okay? As a teacher, I am allowed to make mistakes because I'm human, right? I'm not perfect, okay? We are all allowed, or we can all make mistakes not intentionally right because if we know that we're doing something wrong then it's not it's not good right but uh but you know but this is a good example what else what else can we do what else you have the, like the permission to do ask for questions okay uh -huh. we can ask for questions we are allowed to ask questions mm -hmm. We can answer the question. We can answer questions, yes, from our classmates. Yes, if we know the answer, you can answer, no problem. What else? You can, you can participate, participate more in the class. Yes, you can participate more in class, yes. Okay, so these are things that we are allowed to do. Okay, and what do you have to do? I have like, to do English every day. I have to do English every day. Yes, that's good. What else? I have to do the exams. I have to do exams. Okay. I have to take exams. I have to take exams. Remember that this verb, you can change it, right? For example, you can take exams every day or every month or every, every certain time. For example, I have, you have to, we have to work. We have to. We have to pay attention. Okay, these are like no. We have to practice. Too. We have to practice English a lot if we want to, if you want to master it, right? If you want to master, if you want to, to speak well. What else? We have to log in the platform. We have to log in. Log, log, log in on the platform, yes. You have to complete all the exercises in the, in the, in the no, platform. On the platform and high in the quiz and the test yeah. before, before uh, I think that before. Finish the course. No, I think that you have one extra day or two extra days. 
Yes, but you know, before they close the the, the program. Okay. okay. But you have to do that. Okay, so these are, you know, uh, if you see things you can do, things, okay, can and allowed are like synonyms, let's say, right? Allowed would always sound more more sophisticated. It would sound more more academic, okay? Permitido, right? Permission. What? In Spanish, permitido. Uh -huh, yes, yeah, we can, we're allowed. But it's something like, you know, se nos permite, right? When you say that. If we are allowed to say one word in Spanish per class. Okay, se nos permite decir, okay? And then well, we can say one word in, in Spanish in class, okay? So you can use it. Or oh, we have to speak only English in class. What can you do? What are you allowed to do? And what do you have to do? Don't forget to write your examples on our discussion box. Okay. Then in the next example we have, let's see. I think these ones are not really complicated to. Easy. Yes, too, com too, too complicated to use, right? But let's see. Uh, look at the images, match these school rules with the correct sign. Okay, letter A, I think you can. Ah, it's better the other one. Okay, it's better here, okay. Now the first one, look, lock, sorry. Lock, lock your bikes, lock your bikes in the bike rack. Letter A. You can. F. Letter, F. what picture? F. F. Letter F. F. Okay, picture so you F. have, uh -huh, picture F, you say lock. Okay, this is the lock. Your bike in the, the rack. This is the rack for bikes. Okay, the second one. No letter eating A. or drinking letter in the classroom. A. Letter A. Letter A, picture A, okay. Good. Uh, no playing ball in the hallway. Letter H. 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 And that's nice to play in the hallway. <laughs> okay, keep the classroom door closed. Letter D. 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 No pets allowed on campus. Letter C. Letter C. Letter C. Okay. And throw all trash oh. in the news in the waste paper basket. Letter, Letter G. G. Letter G. Letter G. Letter G. Letter G. Select an option for number seven. Don't open the window. No. Picture E. Picture E. And last but not least, turn out, turn out the turn light out the when leaving. Picture Letter B. Letter B. Okay, you can see the switch. Okay, so we have F, A, H, D, C, G, E, and B. Okay. Okay, Beatrice, can you please read instructions here? Oh, wait, this, no, not okay. yet. Mm -hmm. Listen to three conversations about driving. Choose true or false for each statement. Okay, good. Now listen and try to answer the, the questions. Page 96. Exercise 11. Listening. What's in a sign? 
Part A. Listen to three conversations about driving. Check true or false for each statement. One. Oh no, not another parking ticket. That's the second one this week. Why did I get a ticket for parking here? I thought this was a free parking zone. Maybe you can only park here after working hours. Is there a sign around anywhere? Oh, you're right. There's one over there. I didn't even notice it. Looks like you can't park here till after 6 p.m. How much is the fine? Would you believe it? $60. Two. I wonder why that traffic officer is signaling me. Perhaps he means you're driving too fast. No, I don't think so. The speed limit is 60, and I'm only going 55. Hmm. I wonder why there are no other cars in this lane. What do you mean? Well, you see how the other cars are all in the lane next to us? You're right. I think this one is just for buses and taxis. They really should put up better signs around here. Three. That's weird. The last few cars driving toward us were flashing their lights. I see what you mean. There's another one. Maybe my lights are on or something. Let me check. No, they're off. Do you think there's an accident up ahead? Maybe you'd better slow down. Oh, now I see what's happening. There's a patrol car up ahead checking people's speed. How nice of those other drivers to let me know. Well, I'm within the speed limit. At least I am now. Page 96. Exercise 11. Part B. Listen again. Which drivers did something wrong? 1. Oh, no. Not another parking ticket. That's the second one this week. Why did I get a ticket for parking here? I thought this was a free parking zone. Maybe you can only park here after working hours. Is there a sign around anywhere? Oh, you're right. There's one over there. I didn't even notice it. Looks like you can't park here till after 6 p.m. How much is the fine? Would you believe it? $60. Two. I wonder why that traffic officer is signaling me. Perhaps he means you're driving too fast. No, I don't think so. The speed limit is 60, and I'm only going 55. Hmm. I wonder why there are no other cars in this lane. What do you mean? Well, you see how the other cars are all in the lane next to us? You're right. I think this one is just for buses and taxis. They really should put up better signs around here. Three. That's weird. The last few cars driving toward us were flashing their lights. I see what you mean. There's another one. Maybe my lights are on or something. Let me check. No, they're off. Do you think there's an accident up ahead? Maybe you'd better slow down. Oh, now I see what's happening. There's a patrol car up ahead checking people's speed. How nice of those other drivers to let me know. Well, I'm within the speed limit. At least I am now. Okay. So, was it easy to understand, right? Not too complicated. Not really. Not really? Yeah. <laughs> can't believe it. Okay, but let's see. Okay, but let's see if we can answer this one. The man hasn't had a parking ticket lately. Or false. Like false. 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 Why false? Because, because he had two ticket parking in a week. In a week, right? Yes. So parking is allowed there during working hours. Or six. Mm -hmm. true. Uh, after six. After so six. It is? it is true. It is true, right? It's not allowed during working hours. And the fine for parking is $16. False. 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 Why false? He says it's sixty. Sixty. 60. Yes. 60. Huh? sixty. Sixty, not sixteen. So it is false, right? 
Okay, the woman is driving faster than the speed limit. False. 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 She was False. driving 55. 55, right? Uh -huh. Below, below the speed limit. All right. Uh huh. There are other cars in in her lane. True. False. 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 Why? Uh, because there, there are cars no cars. Is... Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, Sergio, you were going to say something? Uh, th there is no other cars in the same way that she was driving. Why? Why, why were there no uh, more cars? Because it's the, the line reserved for taxis and buses. Okay, yes. That's, that's yes. nice in some countries, right? That they have lanes, special, for, special lanes for buses. Or and taxis. taxis. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, the lane is reserved for buses and taxis. True. 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 Okay, and third and last conversation, the other drivers are flashing their lights. True. 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 Okay, we do this in El Salvador, right? That you go like this, okay? That you flash your lights. Light. Flashing the light. Uh-huh, so it is true. Like, pasa, apurate. <laughs> That's another meaning. <laughs> That's another thing. He's <laughs> driving with his lights on. False. 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 Right? Lights are okay. He's... And the other drivers are giving him a warning. True. 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 Right? What are they telling him? The police was near. Uh -huh, the police is near and they are? Checking, checking speed limits. The speed limits. Speed limits. Okay. Wow. Now here, what, what do we use here in El Salvador now? We use ways. Okay. Ways help you a lot. You know, when they are checking the police. You know that in, in the United States, uh, for example, there are some states, cities where ways is, is not allowed. Okay. People, really? drivers are not permitted, uh -huh, are not allowed to use, to use it. To use it because of that, you know, because, uh, there are always the people are always warning others that the police is near. Okay, then they they uh, they avoid they avoid the the roadblocks, and then sometimes right. people are drinking or speeding. Okay, so that's why in some if they find you with the with the with the app in your phone, you know they they penalize you. They they give you a ticket to, or a fine. Okay, good. Now let's check the answer, right? And see if we were right. Okay, true, false, true, true, false, false. Yes, right? We are right. Is there any that you would like to listen from the conversations? No? No, teacher. No, it's no. fine. Thank no, you. Okay, good. What a, what a great group you, you got, teacher. Oh, yes. And you, know, you have better ear than... <laughs> than I mean, you wash your ears. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure that you wash your ears. You're speaking <laughs> No, uh, you know, uh, there is one thing that is important. Uh, sometimes we might think that in this kind of exercises, especially, uh, remember, it's always good to see, because, uh, when you are taking exams, it's good to see questions and to make sure that you understand the instruction. Because, you know, there is, sometimes they give you a lot of information that you don't need to answer what you are being, this is, listen to this, what you are being asked, passive voice, okay? What you are being asked in the efforts, okay? And then uh, that's why it is important to, to get the main idea, okay? Exactly what you are uh, being asked to do in the efforts. Because sometimes, you know, to try, unless if you have an excellent memory, okay, that maybe some of you do, uh, doesn't matter if you can if you can recall if you can retain more information it's okay right? but if you think that it's too much then just focus on the specific information 
you are being requested. Okay. Good. So then, uh, let's see here, George Lemos, can you please read this uh, objective here? Okay. Five or oh, lesson of you. In this class, you will listen to conversations where all the conditional sentences, where if clouds are used on context. Okay. Who remembers this? I love this class. I love this topic. It's very nice. Because you can give a lot of you can give a lot of examples. Does anybody remember anything about it? No? Ready? The teacher gave us a dollar for every class we commit. <laughs> that is a what if, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they say if I this is this is it. If I if gave I, you, if I have twenty dollars, if I gave you, if I gave you a dollar every yeah. time you come to this class, I will be, yeah. I will be, I will be poor now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but is, that's why it says unreal. It's contrary to the fact. Unreal. But in this moment, I am not very poor because you know I'm not giving you that dollar. Because that. Ronnie is with me. Oh, Ronnie yes. is not. Yes, no. Ronnie is. Yeah, is, he, is he there? Bernie is making money right now. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie is the one who sponsors who sponsors yeah. my, my expenses in this class. Okay, good. <laughs> now let's listen to this. Look at this. If I found okay, this is this is where you're going to see this, right? If I found seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, if I found, but it means if in the case, but it's not true. Okay, you express this in past, but what you really mean is the present. Okay, pay attention to the video. What would you do if you found lots of money? Listen to the conversation and find out what these two people would do. If I found $750,000, part A, listen and practice. Look at this. Some guy found $750,000. He returned it and the owner simply thanked him with a phone call. You're kidding. If I found $750,000, I wouldn't return it so fast. Why? What would you do? Well, I'd go straight to the mall and spend it. I could buy lots of nice clothes and jewelry. Someone might also find out about it, and then you could go to jail. Hmm, you've got a point there. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What would Phil do if he found $750,000? So, what would you do if you found $750,000? Oh, you know me, Pat. I'm so honest, I scare myself sometimes. I'd take the money straight to the police. I guess that wouldn't be such a bad idea. Maybe you'd be luckier than the guy in the article. Maybe the owner of the money would give you a big reward. Well, they say honesty pays, right? Tell us, what would you really do if you found a wallet full of money or an expensive cell phone? Type your answers on our discussion box. Don't worry, we won't tell anyone. Take to the mall and spend it. I could buy lots of nice clothes. Okay, in order to practice this, so what she says, uh, to practice this structure, this is what you have to do, right? Okay. There are two parts, like two clauses in a sentence. If I found one dollar, okay, if I found seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, this is one this is the if close. Okay. Let me let me make this. If close. Okay, if close. If if I found 
700. How much? 750. Okay, 750. Millions. Thousand. <laughs> Oh, no, don't make me no, don't make me drink too much. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> With this, I can I can live one extra life. Okay. All right. This is the if clause, right? If I. Then what is the result clause? Then we use a comma, right? If we use the if clause, and then then we have. The result close. Okay, what is the result close? I would, I could. Uh, look look in there. Return. Would return it so fast. Okay. I would I, return it so fast. I would. Wouldn't. I wouldn't return. Return it so fast. Return it. Okay, that's what you, that's what this person would do. Okay, so, but what I want you to see is this, two things, two things to pay attention. One, simple path. Wow. Simple path. The if close, always simple path. Okay, and I wouldn't return it. And look, in the result close, would plus the base form of the verb. You see here, what would you do? If I go, we say, I would go straight to the mail and spend it. I have to buy lots. And then this is not my, so you say, if I, if I found. So then you're gonna use, I wouldn't return it. No questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what do we say? This uh, kind of uh, sentences is an unreal. Okay. okay, and the meaning is in present or in past. What the sentence really means? In future, no. If I, for example, if I say, "If I were you." If I were you, is present or past? Not, not a sense, not this, obviously, if I were you is in past, but when, but what is my intention? What am I trying to say? If I were you, I would buy a house in San Salvador. In present. Okay, I am using, I am using verbs in past and not using the would, but what I really mean is something that, it that I am not in this moment, okay? For example, if mm -hmm. I were rich, okay? Ron is not here, right? So if, no. <laughs> I, if I were rich, if I were rich, I would buy a house in Miami. No, I would change in New York. I would buy an apartment in New York. If I were rich, I would buy an apartment in New York. But what is the reality? That's why it is unreal. It's contrary to the fact, contrary to the reality. The reality is that I am not, I am not rich. Therefore, I am not buying an apartment in New York. Okay, I can say, if I had, if I had more time, Now we'll delete all this. So if I had more time, what? I will, I will continue the class. I would continue. Okay, I will continue the class. Okay. And then this is the result. So, but the reality is I have no more time and then I will not continue the class, right? Yes. What else? Anybody who can give me an example 
Okay, look at this one. You can you can swap, you can switch, you can invert the sentence, and you can begin. I would continue the class if I have more time. Uh huh. I would continue mm -hmm. the class if you I have more time. time. But you can put the result close before, and the condition, the condition of close after, right? I would travel. I would travel to Europe if the airport where they say if their airport were open okay now here you use also for example if i were if you were if you were if you were if they were if we were and the conditional is where for everything okay that's easy that's what i like this this structure okay mm -hmm. what else anybody who wants to give me a sentence me teacher Okay, go ahead. If I have enough money, I will rest all day. <laughs> okay. Exactly. If I have more money, okay, she has money, but um, but she needs more. Okay. <laughs> Repeat the sentence. If I have enough money, oh, I will I will rest all day. All day, okay, enough. Okay, she has money, but not enough to rest all day. <laughs> no, but you see, no, for example, the, the, uh, we have to be, you know, uh, careful when we say these sentences, right? Because if, if I say, if I have more money, ah, oh, okay, so he has money, okay? Exactly. If I have more money, I will rest all day, okay? So, I mean, okay, he has money, but he wants to have more, okay? So, depending, this is what we express, right? For example, if I say here, if I have more time, Okay, I have time, but no more. Okay, as much as I probably as much as I wish. Okay, one more sentence and then we go. The teacher. Yes. Okay. Um, if the border were open, I would travel to Costa Rica. If. If the weather. If the border were open. Okay. Yes. Yes. I would travel to Costa Rica. Perfect. If the borders were open, I would travel to Costa Rica. But what is the reality? The borders are closed. Are closed. So closed. you cannot travel to Costa Rica. Okay. So you see, this is just uh, to remember the if close. Okay. It's like the relative closes, right? If uh, is the if the condition. And in the other one, we have the result. Okay, so if close, result close. And then you can invert. Oh, and when you invert it, then you say, uh, no, I don't think. Teacher, just just for to be clear, mm -hmm. we always have to use uh, where. No matter if the if plural or singular, we are what we are talking. When you're using the verb to be, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, look at this other one in the same sentence, but now I invert it. I would, I would continue the class if I had more time. Yeah. No comma. <laughs> okay. If I use the if uh, the if. Uh, uh, close at the beginning, I use the comma. If I use it at the end, I don't use the comma. Okay. Okay. And and you can invert at any time you want. You want. So there is no rule for that. Okay. Good. Questions so far. No. no. Okay. Then uh, a. If, don't forget to, to, if you want extra practice, the other one is not an obligation to do it, but the one about the passive voice, but I guess it's, it's good if you take that chance, you know, to practice, right? Because, uh, okay. And do the same with the if close. The thing is that, you know, that this, uh, these topics are very extensive. You know, for example, the conditionals, there are five types of conditionals, okay? And this is just one of them. And then, uh, and it's actually probably 16 hours in a 
from this course is probably not enough. But if you send some uh, doubts that you need to clear up, you know, through that email, writing sentences, it's going to be easier for you too. And for me too, to, to give you some more instructions. Okay. So, Richard, have, uh, yes. Will, will you send us the presentation of the oh, yes, nine right kinds now. of. Yes, oh, okay, right, right now, so when I say finish, I sent you that. The okay, PPT, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. So, okay, have a very good night. Good night. Okay. And right. relax. Rest as much as you can. See you tomorrow, Jaime. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good bye. Good night. Have a good rest. Thank you.